For this video, you're going to need to understand all of the content from my last two videos. If you haven't watched them already, I'd recommend you check them out first. There'll be links in this video's description. We're going to start with a percentage increase question similar to that from the last video. It says, in 2023, the value of a house was £250,000. In 2024, the value of the house increased by 3% and we need to work out the value of the house in 2024. So for this question, since the value increased by 3%, we're going to work out a multiplier for a 3% increase. To do this, we start with 100%, add 3%, which is 103%. We then take this number, 103, and divide it by 100, which will give you 1.03. This is the multiplier for a 3% increase. So we take the value of the house, £250,000, and then multiply it by this multiplier, 1.03. This will increase it by 3%, and give us the answer to the question, £257,500. Let's take a closer look at this calculation. The £250,000 was the original value of the house in 2023. The 1.03 here is the multiplier for the 3% increase, and the £257,500 is the new value of the house in 2024. In the question, we were given the value 250,000, and we used it to work out the answer 257,500. But what if it was the other way around? We were told the 257,500, but we were not told the 250,000. How would we work this out? Well, this is precisely the point of this video. If we didn't know the original value, we'd need to give it a letter, so say the letter x. And we'd end up with this equation here x multiplied by 1.03 is equal to 257,500. We could solve this equation to find the value of x. On the left hand side we're multiplying by 1.03. So if we divided both sides by 1.03 we could find the value of x. On the left hand side if you divide by 1.03 this will cancel the multiply by 1.03. So we're just left with x equals. On the right hand side though we need to divide this value 257,500 by 1.03. Now you'll probably need a calculator to do this, but if you do, you'll end up with x being 250,000. Now of course we already knew this value from before, but this demonstrates how we can work backwards, or in reverse, to find an original amount if we know the final amount. Let's try and apply this to another question. In this question we're told that Kieran spent 120 minutes revising today. This is 25% more than he spent revising yesterday, and we need to work out how many minutes he spent revising yesterday. So in this question there are two amounts of revision, the amount from today and the amount from yesterday. We know the amount from today, it's 120 minutes, but we don't know the amount from yesterday, in fact that's what we need to work out, so we'll give that the letter x. We are told though in the question that the amount from today is 25% more than it was from yesterday. So if we write down yesterday's time spent revising, and increase this by 25%, we'd arrive at today's amount of time spent revising. We don't know how long he spent revising yesterday, so we gave that the letter x. We know the multiplier for a 25% increase, it's 1.25, and today's amount of time spent revising was in the question, it's 120 minutes. So we can form this equation here, x multiplied by 1.25 is equal to 120. We can then solve this in the same way. Since we're multiplying by 1.25 on the left, we could divide both sides by 1.25. On the left hand side, this will give us x equals but on the right hand side we need to do 120 divided by 1.25. Again I'd use a calculator for this and you'll end up with 96. So the amount of time he spent revising yesterday was 96 minutes. Now a super common mistake for a question like this is to say well if yesterday's plus 25% gives today's, can't you just start with today's and subtract 25% to get back to yesterday's? And this doesn't actually work and I'll show you why now. From the answer that we worked out a moment ago, we know yesterday's time spent revising was 96 minutes, and from the question it tells us that today's is 120. This works because if you find 25% of 96 you get 24. If you then add on those 24 minutes to get from 96 you do end up at 120. If you however try to subtract 25% from 120 you won't get back to 96. 25% of 120 is 30. So if you try to work backwards in this way, you would subtract 30 from 120, but that gives you 90 and not 96, as we know is the answer to the question. The key thing here is that when you do 25% of 96 or 120, you end up with different amounts. And based on the way the question's worded, it's the 25% of the 96 that's important, since we increase that amount by 25%. 
Therefore, if you get a question like this in the exam, you want to approach it the way I've shown you. You can't say that just because you increase by 25%, you can reverse this by subtracting 25%, because it's 25% of a different number. Let's have a look at another question. In this question, it says that 23,520 home fans attended a football game. The number of home fans is 68% more than the number of away fans. We're asked to work out the number of away fans. So in this question, we have away fans, which is the value we're trying to find out, so we'll give that the letter X. Then we also have the home fans, and we're told this number is 23,520. We're also told the number of home fans is 68% more than the number of away fans. So the number of away fans, if we add 68% to this, we'll end up with the number of home fans. The number of away fans is our letter X, since we don't know that. To increase by 68%, you multiply by 1.68. And then you get the number of home fans, which we do know, that's 23,520. Since we multiply by 1.68 here, we will divide both sides by 1.68. On the left hand side, this will give you x, and on the right hand side, we need to do 23,520 divided by 1.68. If you type this into your calculator, you'll get 14,000 as the answer to the question. Now, reverse percentage questions can also involve a percentage decrease, as well as a percentage increase. Let's have a look at another example. In this question, it says that in a sale, normal prices are reduced by 40%. The sale price of a sofa is £192, and we need to work out the normal price of the sofa. So in this question, we have two prices, the normal price, which we're trying to work out, so that will be the letter X, and the sale price, which we're told in the question, that's 192 Now we know that normal prices are reduced by 40% to get the sale price. So if we start with the normal price, and then subtract 40%, we'll get the sale price. The normal price we don't know, so that's x. To reduce by 40%, you would multiply by 0 0.6. If you're unsure where that comes from, you need to go back and watch my video on percentage increase and decrease. And the sale price we're told in the question, that's 192. So for this one, we're multiplying by 0 0.6, so we'll solve this by dividing both sides by 0 0.6. On the left, that will give us x equals, and on the right, 192 divided by 0 0.6. If you do this, you'll end up with £320. Now, there is another way of doing reverse percentage questions, and I'm going to show you how to do that with this question here. So, we can start with the same sort of diagram, normal price and sale price, but we say that the normal price is 100%. Now, if the normal price is 100%, and we're going to subtract 40%, the sale price must be 60% since 100 subtract 40 is 60. We take the same values we had from before, we say the normal price is x, since we don't know what that is, but the sale price was given in the question, that's 192. Now because the sale price is 60% or 192 pounds, we can say that 60% is equal to 192 pounds. And because the normal price is 100% or x, we could say that 100% is equal to x. Now to find the value of x, all we need to do is work out a way to get from 60% to 100%. There's lots of ways of doing this, but I would like to start by dividing both sides by 6. If you divide 60% by 6, you get 10%. So if we divide the 192 by 6, you'll get £32. Now to get from 10% to 100%, we would multiply by 10, since 10 multiplied by 10 is 100. So we should multiply by 10 on the right side as well. 32 multiplied by 10 is 320. So x must be £320. Let's practice using this new method on one of the questions we did earlier. So earlier we solved this question here and we know the answer was 96 minutes. Let's solve it using this new method. So we would say that yesterday's time spent revising is 100%. Now since today's is 25% more, we would do 100% plus 25%, which is 125%. We didn't know yesterday's time spent revising, we called that the letter X. But we did know today's, that was 120. We can now say that 125% is equal to 120, and 100% is equal to x. We just need to find a way of getting from 125% to 100%. Now in the last question we found 10% first and used that as a sort of stepping stone. We can do the same here, and I'd recommend using 1%. If you ever don't know what to do, go for 1%. To get from 125% to 1%, you just divide by 125, since 125 divided by 125 is 1. So on the right side, we need to do 120 divided by 125. This will give you 0.96. Then to get from 1% to 100%, you just multiply by 100. So on the right side, we need to multiply 0.96 by 100. 
and you get 96, which is no surprise because that's the answer we got earlier. Now let's have a look at two more questions that you can try as practice. First of all, Val's phone bill increased by 15% between March and April. In April, Val's phone bill was £20.93. Work out Val's phone bill in March. So if you wish, pause the video and give this one a try. So let's have a look at the answer then. In this question, we've got the phone bill in two different months, March and April. Between March and April, the phone bill increased by 15%. So if we start with March, then add 15%, we'll get April. In the question, we're told the phone bill for April is £20.93, so we can write that down. But we're trying to find the phone bill in March, so we'll call that the letter X. To increase a value by 15%, we multiply it by 1.15. So we end up with this equation here. To solve this one, we will divide both sides by 1.15. On the left, that'll give you x equals, and on the right, £20.93 divided by 1.15. If you do this on a calculator, you'll get the answer £18.20. Now, I'll also solve this using the other method. We would say that March is 100%. That means April must be 15% more, so 115%. We write down the values of x and £20.93, and form these two equations here. 115% is £20.93, and 100% is x. Let's use 1% as a stepping stone here. To get from 115% to 1%, we divide by 115. So we do the same on the right hand side, and you'll get this value here. Now, this might seem strange because you can't have 18.2 pence, but we do need to keep that 2 there for this question. You shouldn't round off these numbers at any point until the very end of the question. Then, to get from 1% to 100%, you multiply by 100. And you do the same here, and you'll get £18.20, as we had before. For the next question, it says a cup of tea cools down by 20% in the first 10 minutes after being poured. The temperature of the tea 10 minutes after it was poured is 64 degrees C. Work out the temperature of the tea when it was originally poured. So again, if you wish, pause the video and give this one a try. For the answer, we have the temperature at two different times, when it was first poured and 10 minutes later. In between those, we see it cools down by 20%, so we're going to decrease by 20%. We are told the temperature 10 minutes later, which is 64 degrees, but we don't know it when it was first poured, that's what we need to work out. So that's going to be our letter X. To decrease by 20%, you multiply by 0.8. So we form this equation here. To solve this, we would divide both sides by 0.8, which will give you X equals 64 divided by 0.8, which will give you the answer 80 degrees C. Now let's also solve this using the other method. For this one, we'd say the first poured temperature is 100%, and if we subtract 20% from 100, we get 80%. Let's add in the same values from before, so x and 64 degrees C. That gives us the equations 80% is 64 degrees, and 100% is x. For this one, we could use 10% as a stepping stone. To get from 80 to 10, we divide by 8. So we do 64 divided by 8 as well, which will give you 8. Then from 10% to 100%, you multiply by 10. So 8 multiplied by 10 gives us 80, just like we got before. Hopefully you've now mastered the idea of reverse percentages, but there are some other types of questions you need to be aware of. Let's have a look at a few examples of those. In this question, it says that Jason is in a detention with his friend Aaron. Due to poor behaviour, Jason's detention is extended by another 30%. Jason's detention lasts 12 minutes longer than Aaron's detention, and we need to work out how long Aaron's detention was. So for this question, we've got two detentions that are different times. We've got Aaron's and Jason's. And we're told that Jason's detention is extended by another 30%. So if we add 30% to Aaron's detention, we'll get Jason's detention. For this question, I'm going to use the second approach. I'm going to say that Aaron's detention time is 100%, which means that Jason's must be 130%. Now, the key difference between this question and the ones we've looked at before is we're not told either of their detention times. The only number we're given in the question is 12 minutes, which is how much longer Jason's detention is than Aaron's. So that 12 minutes doesn't represent either of their detention times, but it does represent the 30% increase. So for this question, we can form an equation, but it involves the 30% rather than the 100 or the 130%. We would say that 30% is equal to 12 minutes. Now for this question we want to know how long Aaron's detention was, so we're going to need to find this 100% here. So let's make our target number 100%. All we need to do now is just like before, get from 30% to 100%. I'll go for 10% as a stepping stone here. So divide 30% by 3, 
which means we need to divide 12 minutes by 3, which will give you 4 minutes. Then to get from 10% to 100%, we multiply by 10. So 4 minutes multiplied by 10 is 40 minutes. So Aaron's detention must have been 40 minutes long. If this question had asked for Jason's detention time, we would have done exactly the same method, but rather than going for 100%, we would have gone for 130%. Let's have a look at another example. In this question, it says that a large box of cereal has 35% more cereal than a small box of cereal. The large box has 119 grams more cereal than the small box, and we need to work out how much cereal is in the larger box. So for this one, we have two boxes, the small one and the large one. In the question, we're told the large one has 35% more cereal. So if we increase the small one by 35%, we'll get the large one. So let's say the small one is 100%, and if you add 35% to that, the large one must be 135%. Now, just like the last question, we don't know either of these values. So we don't know how much is in the small box or the large box. The number we're given in the question, 119 grams, is how much more cereal there is. So that 119 grams must represent the increase, or the 35%. So we would say that 35% is equal to 119 grams. For this question, we've been asked for the large box of cereal. So we want to go for 135%. So let's make that our target. I'll use a stepping stone of 1% this time. So to get from 35% to 1%, you divide by 35. So you do 119 divided by 35, which will give you 3.4. To get from 1% to 135%, we multiply by 135. So you multiply 3.4 by 135, and you'll get the answer, 459 grams. Let's try one more example. For this one, it says that Freya buys a new calculator with a voucher for 25% off. The voucher allows her to save £21.25. We need to work out how much the calculator costs without the voucher. So for this one, we have two prices, without the voucher and with the voucher. Since having the voucher gives 25% off, this value must be 25% less than if you didn't have the voucher. So without the voucher, we'll say is 100%, and with the voucher must be 25% less, so 75%. Once again, we don't have either of these prices in the question. The number we're given is the amount she saves, £21.25, which must represent the reduction of 25%. So we could say that 25% is the same as £21.25. For this question, we need to work out how much it costs without the voucher, which will be the 100% here. So our target is 100%. Now, you can get to 100% from 25 quite easily just by multiplying by 4. £21.25 multiplied by 4 is £85. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, and why not try the exam questions in this video's description.